Hey guys, this is Potter Incorporated. Hey, welcome to my new video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple jQuery plugin. And right now, just in case you're new to my channel, I'd like you to just hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification button just in case I put up a new video online. So I'm going to go quick start on this. You know, it's uh, very important as a developer when you are developing an application or you're working on a project it's very important you have a plugin most especially when you create your plugin by yourself today I'm gonna give you a little walk walkthrough about a jQuery plugin how to create a jQuery plugin okay and now this plugin we're gonna create is um, I call it copyright.js what it does is just um, to help you update the year of a website the copyright year of maybe every website you do so let's jump start first of all I'm gonna create a folder on my documents then uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna open up my terminal I'm gonna call these um, make their J plugin Okay, I'm gonna dive into that folder. Okay, then I'm gonna create two extra folders for that. I'm gonna say make their CSS folder and now uh, a JS folder. Okay. Okay, that's all. So if you notice, I got a folder here. Then I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call that. Um, index.html we're just going to click save go to my documents j plugin and call this one index.html hit the save button okay for those of you that are new to my video I put up a video on, on um, html tutorial there you can learn the basic component of a web page. So on this tutorial I'm really just gonna create a simple web page. I'm gonna start by using duct type. Duct type call that HTML. So HTML. I'm gonna give it a head in the head I'm gonna put a title. I'm gonna call it um, jQuery plugin. Okay, so I'm gonna go title of our page. Then I'm gonna create a body. Oops, okay, you know what? Um, I think I'm gonna change the theme of my test editor so I can see the closer. I, uh, I think I like this darker one, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna create a body. Good. And just in case you, you were wondering what kind of what approach I'm using, I'm using I'm running a Linux version 19. So if it is if you may be using Windows, you'd be surprised about the environment. This is a Linux operating system. So on my page, I'm just gonna create a small H1. Say, call this. This is my first jQuery plugin. Okay. Then um, I'm gonna create a div, and I'm gonna call this div. Uh, let's say give it an ID. I'm gonna call this copyrights. Under the D, I may have uh, some like uh, a P, a paragraph. Then I may put it, and I'll say copyright. I use an HTML entity. You say ampersand copy semicolon. All right. Then here is supposed to have the maybe 2020. 
you see all rights reserved whatever developed by order incorporated okay all right so uh, we're gonna get some like this all right well actually this this uh, for the sake of this tutorial this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to create a, pl a plugin that we automatically update this date when the year changes. But right now we're 2020, it won't go to 2021. I don't have to come to this website or this file to come change this automatically. It changes to 2021. All right, so that's the plugin I'm going to show you. So, meanwhile, I want us to dive into our CSS. I'm going to save this file. I want us to go to our folder again. Okay, or rather, I'm just going to create a new file from here. Okay, and I'm going to call this CSS. And I'll just hit the save button. Go to the same folder, J plugin, CSS folder. I may call this style.css. Good. So from here, first of all, I'm going to set my margins and my patterns on my page to be zero. Adding zero. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to rephrase my copyright copyright ID. I'm going to give the background a color of oh, let's say uh, a little bit hash, a little bit darker. Use a three three three. Then uh, the test color. I'm going to make it white. Or rather, I use a white smoke. That's F2, F2, F2. Then, um, what else? Okay, I'm gonna align it to center. Okay. I'm gonna align the test to center. Oops, sorry. I'll just leave that for now. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back. To, oops. I'm going to go back to my folder and I'm going to run the index.html file. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I'm going to change. Okay, the background didn't change. Oh, so on my HTML file, it reminds me I'm going to go back on there and um, I'm going to change this one. Here in my head, I'm gonna link it to. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna link this my CSS. Okay. I call this tile sheet. And href. I call this CSS style CSS. Okay. Right. So in that case, our CSS file can be linked all together. So I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to go back to my web page and reload. Good. Boom. You see that? It has a copyright logo, the 2020. All right, reserved, developed by Party Incorporated. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a, I'm going to create some mark, some padding in here, so for it to make it look more well rendered. So we'll go back to our CSS. Then I'm gonna add a margin. I'm gonna make it an auto. Oops. I'm gonna create another one for the P. I'll say copyright. So for those of you who have not learned CSS, you can go to my tutorial, uh, HTML tutorial. There I taught CSS. Okay, if you understand the CSS properties. So I'm going to reference the paragraph on inside the copyright. So first of all, I'm going to give the paragraph or the margin. I'm making an alter. Why? So that you can center everything automatically. Okay. Then I'm going to create a pattern. Let's say um, up and down five pixels. Then I'm going to go left and right. 
So, okay, so let's save and see what's gonna give. Okay, it's more, uh, it's more like uh, better. Okay. okay, let's go back. Uh, P. Okay, I'm gonna align it. Center. Oops. Just align. Put it on center. Boom. Good. Now it's had a middle now. Okay. So now I'll say I'm done with the CSS. Remember, this tutorial is just for the sake of the plugins. I just want to show you where I would like to use this plugin. Okay, now, so let's go back to our um, code. And now we're going to create a new file. <clears throat> and I'm going to call that now. I'm just going to save it. I'm going to save it on a folder called JS, my JS folder. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. Um, okay, jQuery dot copyrights dot js. You know, whenever you're creating a plugin for jQuery, I'll, I'll just for the sake of um, standard. Always like using the name jQuery dot copyright yeah, but anyways you can save it in anything you want. But I just prefer using jQuery dot the name of the plugin dot js. Okay, that's how I prefer it. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going back to my H in this HTML file. I'm going to link this this uh, plugin in here. So I'm going to use a script tag. Give it a source is on JS folder. I'll say jQuery dot copyrights is there an S in there? Let's check first okay copyrights yeah it's an S dot JS and I can say type though this one's optional though test just JavaScript and I'll close my script tag then also I uh, so we're gonna add our JS uh, jQuery plugin. Okay. Um, right now, I think I'm gonna just um, do a little copy and um, paste. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do first of all, I uh, think I'm, I'm just gonna get a jQuery plugin. Just log on to jQuery. Let's just get a quick jQuery um, plugin and uh, use that to automate our our plugin. Okay, so let's go to jQuery website. Oops. Oh, okay, it's here. Okay, so um, just go down. We have a lot of we have a lot of content here on this jQuery website. So all we need is just to click on download jQuery 3.41 and search for uh, the maybe CDN version. Okay, good. Download compressed production. You click on this one. Okay. Oops. So I'm going to copy all this everything in here. And select all. Copy. Okay. Then I'll go back to my folder and I'm gonna create a new file then I'll um, paste all the things in here then I'll click on the save button then I'm gonna save it on this folder and I'm gonna call this um, jQuery dash three I think three point four oops Two, right? As a new version. Okay, three point four one. That means that yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll say jQuery three point four one. That mean that js. So I'm gonna save it like that. Okay. So we have a jQuery file. So I'm gonna click this. Press save. And it's gonna save. Good. So we have our jQuery file now. I can close it because we're not gonna be working on. This jQuery plugin files 
rather we're going to work in our um, jQuery.copyright.js okay that's where we're going to be working on okay so um, we're going to go back to our index page file so I'm going to link that um, our jQuery plugin we downloaded this one jQuery.main.js so what I'm going to do now to save time I'm just going to copy the name then I'll come here <coughs> And I'll just paste it here. Reference folders is now JS folder jQuery.3.41.me.js. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Actually, when you reload the page, I you shouldn't expect anything to happen in the page. But it's already loaded. Okay, if there's an error in the in your linking, you just press the F2 button. Oops, it's on my view. Okay, just take it back on. Good. Just press the F2 button, check your console if there's anything or any error or not. So now we don't have an error. So I'm going to close this. So let's go back to our jQuery copyright.js. Good. Now, first of all, when you're creating a plugin on jQuery, you know, it's um this plugin sometimes it may be used globally, they can be used by everyone, or maybe sometimes there's some variables you can create on your project that may tend to conflict. So in that case, first of all you're gonna press type in the parenthesis. Okay, you type in function, then you put a dollar sign, okay, then this and you hit the enter then in here you gonna put another parentheses you write J query okay now the reason the reason for this is quite simple this is simply because oops, this is simply because when you are creating a jQuery plugin Sometimes your um, variables may tend to conflict with other variables you may be working on your JS file or your JavaScript file because it's possible you can use more than the plugin on, on uh, a particular project. So, in order for you to avoid the conflict between some variable names you may create on your plugin, it's advisable to put it and declare your function or rather your plugin initialization like this. So, we're going to get started. We're gonna start by saying dollar sign dot fn dot uh, whatever name you want to call your plugin. This time around, I'm calling my plugin copyright. Okay. Okay. Then I'm gonna say equals function. Then put open friend, close friend. Column, okay. Then I'm gonna add a semicolon here. Okay, now after you've done that, most times I always recommend you um, create your plugin in order for it to work with any selectors. So I'm gonna say before we start writing the code for our plugin, you're gonna write return this. This is actually referencing the selector or the color of this function. Okay, so I'll say this dot each. Okay, now write function open print, close print, no, semicolon. Okay, now what this does is this whatever selector whatever selector you are selecting let's say you're selecting with the h1 tag you're selecting with the uh, whatever tag you were selecting whatever logic the logic you're going to have here is going to be your function so it is not going to work in on a, on a particular on a particular tag rather it's going to work on any tag you selected so you write our code here okay all right Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to place a little comment here. This simply means to 
if you, you, you declare this, return these at each at function, just in case you want to use this for variable selectors. Now, like I said before, if you want to use any number, any uh, type of selector you want to use, maybe a div, a h1, a paragraph, an, uh, an anchor, or whatever you want to use, that is why you should return this that each function and we go your code here. All right. So meanwhile, let's go back to our HTML file. This I'm going to create a little script tag. Now, this time around, this is where I'm going to initialize that function. So, I want to change this 2022 or whatever date I put here to the current date. So, okay, first of all, let me just take it to 2019. Okay. So, let's just go back there. You can see it's showing 2019. So, when we update our plugin from the code, is going to go to my current date okay it's going to go to the current year rather so here what I'm going to do now is this I'm going to delete this all right I'm going to put in any tag I'm just calling this pan tag I'm going to give it an ID I'll call it year okay all right now this pan tag is going to remain blank okay so I'm going to reload the page it's not in there so I'm going to program that movie add the dates the current date and time of the system. So what I'm going to do here now is this: put my jQuery because I already select my jQuery plugin here, and now uh, I have my plugin file already. So this is what initializes the the plugin. So I'm going to say a dollar sign, okay, colon, single quote, or double quote, whatever you, you choose. I'm going to reference this ID I call spam because this is where I want to initialize the uh, plugin I'm gonna call it a, sh a sharp year dot copyright and that's all it's all I need for that okay so we're gonna go back to our code okay then uh, actually when I reload this page and it's not supposed to do anything okay even when I hit the F12 button I check my console okay it's showing jQuery is not defined. Type error copyright is not a function. Okay, so we're, we're going to deal with this right now. Okay, so let's check the reference is on the index.html and jQuery.copyright.js in the same line also. So we're going to go back in there and first of all, we're going to put a semicolon here. I guess that should solve that problem. So okay, let's um, let's save this. Let's go back to the page. Oh, one card reference error. jQuery not defined. Oh, okay. Let's go back there and again and see line eleven. Oh yeah, I get it. Okay, it's a small J, not a uppercase J. Okay, I think that should work now. Yeah, perfect. Good. It's working now. So you see, um, just a little error in there. So this should be a small J. So take note when you're writing yours, always require ensure you use the small J for jQuery. Okay. Now this is the logic we're gonna do. Now we're, we're gonna change in the dates of that particular um, tag. So first of all, I'm gonna use I'll create a variable. We'll say let let's call it D is equal to new date. It's a JavaScript function. Then um. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say okay return because I'm gonna return the date function now bringing out only the year so we'll say return this dot HTML because now I want to put in a uh, the content of the date inside that HTML tag so remember I said when you're referencing this is you're calling the selector the color of this function. So I'm going to say this dot HTML uh, D dot get full year. Now get full year now it's a function. Okay? So when I put a semicolon here, so it's gonna tell me it's gonna give me the 
only the year of this current date and time with my computer. So I'm gonna save it and reload my page. Okay, type error. This is that HTML is not a function on jQuery copyrights. That JS line eight. Let's go back in there again. Line eight. Okay. This that HTML. Hang on. Let's check. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to use the dollar sign dollar this dot HTML. Yeah, it's how it's supposed to be because we are referencing this. Okay, so um, we're gonna I'm gonna save it now and uh, go back and reload the page. Yeah, it's good now. As you can see, we have 2020 in here. Okay, it has changed. Or if you notice. On our index.html file, there's nothing was here. Okay, let's let's go back again one more time. Let's resume in and I didn't initialize the uh, the the plugin. Just put a little comment. Oops. Okay, and just comment this code. Let's assume in that there's nothing here to initialize. First of all, when I go back and reload the page, what we have here was nothing. Okay, it was blank. So what it's trying to say is this, when your computer date or time changes, automatically it changes this date and time at the copyright of your website. You know this is very important sometimes when you're working on some websites or some projects whereby you may not actually have to be there on that 31st when we're changing maybe from 2019 to 2020 or 2020 to 2021. You want to be there your code will just automatically help you update it to 2020 or 2020 2021 or whatever the case may be anyway so when someone comes into such a web page or website it looks updated okay so your program or your code helps you to run that so let's go back again and I'm just gonna comment remove the comment save it and reload the page it changes to 2020 so that's all for this video thank you guys for watching just in case you're new to my channel always hit the subscribe button or click the bell notification just in case we put up another video again thank you so much have a lovely day bye